If you have any questions as we go, you're welcome to uh, to ask them. I can I can multitask. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, examine the results. Okay, and we have, and this is interesting. Okay, we have Mother Nature's best. Okay, better organic matter, better soil structure, because you can see some of the aggregates stayed there. You can see the silt bar, you know, that shiny apparition in the hillside that we talked about. A uh, gentleman uh, at, uh, in Norfolk told me, he said, when you see that, that means in two weeks you're going to be replanting your bottoms. And here it is right here. And sometimes it takes longer than that. But you have the, the soil quality, but you're minus the residue. The take home here, and I'm going to talk about take home as we wrap up here, guys. The take home here is if you have a CRP that you're returning to cropland, to production, stay away from the tillage because you've got you've got the aggregate stability but in that one tillage pass you've taken a, a lot of the soil uh, pours out of it you've ruined some soil structure and you can you can have this even with 10 or 20 years of, of rest and, and rebuilding you can have a, a uh, degradation of the soil right away okay and you know these guys pretty much died it looks like a, a three D minuses and an F, or two D minuses and an F. Do we want to set these down? Yeah, let's right? set it down. Okay. And now we're going to flip these over. And, and I'm talking earlier about what you harvest versus what goes in. Okay. If it's not running off, it's going in. We filled that that gallon jar, and this this pretty much holds true all the way through. We infiltrated less, but it's all in the pan. Believe it or not, this two inch by 11 by 23 inch pan is holding almost a full gallon of water. That's how much you can, your soils can store with a conventional uh, pore space situation if you just eliminate the raindrop and the soil and the surface seal. Okay, so we're gonna flip them. And, Bud, you wanted to see this a little bit closer? Yes. Okay. This is it. And that bottom third of that pan, it, there's not one of us that hasn't been in there with tractor wheels of flying and spinning and trying to get through that so we can get to some place where we can get traction again. Again, the crusting. Okay, so if it all went off, intuitively, how much went in, I kind of blew that flop. Hmm. And this is, this is the aha moment, and I had another gentleman earlier talking to me about this. It ran off, it didn't go in, and here we have a two inch deep soil profile. It barely got halfway through it, okay? And this is, guys, this is the take home. That two inch rain that you didn't harvest early in the season, or even mid-season. On my way down here, I was listening to KRBN and, and it was reporting the results of the Kansas Wheat Growers Yield contest. And the dry land conventional winners were 59, 59, and 71 bushel an acre. And I thought, well, that's pretty decent wheat for dry land down here. Then they went, they named the no-till winners, and it was 65, 65, and 76. A six bushel an acre difference. And how did that happen? Obviously, with 60 bushel wheat, you guys had some good early season rainfall. But apparently, later on, when it got dry, that's, that's when this becomes key. When you store that extra couple inches in the soil profile, it's there for grain fill. How many times growing up did you see Dad walk out on the porch and go, man, we need to rain in a week or we're screwed. And there's the rain that gets you through that week to that week. How many times did that rain happen 10 days later and it was too late? Here's, here's your own opportunity to do your own self-insurance and get the moisture in the ground for you. Okay, so, uh, okay. Okay. This, even though we have as much runoff, this one is all settled to the bottom. This is, this is your, uh, this is in suspension, in other words, it still, still has some flotation to it, and this is settled at the bottom. So even though there's as much, it's a different, 
Yeah. More volume. Yeah. It's, it's more volume. And folks, that little sediment at the bottom there, that's why New Orleans is now 45 miles from the coastline. It used to be on the coast. That's the delta. If, if you've ever flown in to New Orleans and you circled around the Gulf and you see that delta, it just strikes you how much soils used to be in the Midwest that is down there right now. Okay, am I good with this one, Kat? Yep. Or actually, I'm going to do the other conventional here. Okay, I'm going to flip this one a little bit better, I hope. Uh, you know what? I'm I know you're right now. Go ahead and do it. I can do one more over here. Okay. This is the D minus. It yielded about as much. This is 30% residue cover. You work this 60, 70 bushel wheat ground enough to get it down to 30% residue cover, and you lost all your opportunity to harvest that free rainfall. Same thing. Okay. <coughs> and here's your 100% residue cover. Here's, uh, you can just tell by the way this weighs that, they're, that it's full of water. But this is the first year you just park the tillage implement. And you let even that conventional soil with its higher bulk density, but still an existing pore space structure that would allow infiltration. Because you deflected the impact of that raindrop, you allowed it to maintain its integrity. Look at the water in there. This is the first year. Your goal is to get to 20 years like Mother Nature and have the residue cover and the aggregate stability. So this is, this is the infiltration from this. It's going to hold a lot, but it's, it's, it's not going to be able to, it's, it'll be overloaded. It won't make it through like Mother Nature's best does because it doesn't have the the uh, soil structure, the integrity of those pore spaces. Okay, here's the CRP that you were looking so forward to having mega yields from, Sorry. and you cloud it. See, we made it almost all the way through in some places, but almost all the way through. <laughs> Again, the, the residue part of this, it's long-term continuous no-till. Let the biological systems develop. Let them leak the glomalin that glues those aggregates together. And, and the pore space thing comes from freeze-thaw activity. That's your tillage. Just imagine this. You've got your soil particles in there. You get a freeze. They expand. You get a thaw, they contract, and each one leaves that, that little pore space there, that air space. And that's what you want. That's the beauty of this system. Uh, I think we can flip. I'm going to have to flip Mother Nature's best. Well, we can do it right here, I think. Is there room there? You'll just have to clean up afterward. OK. <laughs> you know, this is a good time to talk about, uh, when we think of soil quality, a lot of times we think of farming. And, actually planting an annual crop, but there's soil quality in rangeland too, and I work with a lot of ranchers, and because of, we've been in a 10-year drought out there, and I'm sure you guys have been too, a lot of our, our rangeland is um, pretty poor right now. You know, we, we have, a lot of guys didn't, didn't decrease their herds any, and so there was a lot of overgrazing. Well, you know, when you overgraze, you lose your root structure too. You know, as, it, as the plant gets taller or gets shorter on top, the roots come up too. That gives it less room to pick up nitrogen and, and the water that it needs, and it just is a, it's a compounding effect. Well, the, that's organic matter. And when those roots die and the, the microbes start mineralizing it, and there's no more roots down there below, we start to lose some of that soil structure too. So, so there's soil quality in rangeland too. And we need to, you know, just as, Neil Dennis and all these guys are talking about adding the cattle to the system. 
We have to remember that our big range and our pastures, our tame pastures, their soil quality there too, we have to, have to be cognizant of that as well. And interesting, you know, we can always learn. Every time I come down here, I learn more. I was talking to Neil yesterday as I was setting up, and he mentioned that his neighbor had told him, this was in late October, that there's six inches of frost in the ground. And Neil thought, hmm, yeah, I'm gonna go out and check mine out. And he took a thermometer out with him, and he was able to stick the thermometer in. It, it was, I think, his was still 32 degrees in November. Okay, and what are you doing here? We're talking microbiological activity. The, the, the soil livestock that we talked about earlier are living, living creatures. They're giving off CO2 and they're giving off heat. So having a healthy living soil, is actually, it actually expanded the growing season for Neil in that pasture. It's gonna warm up earlier because there's biological activity. It's gonna, it's gonna shut down later. So here you are at, at elevation 5,000 with 14 inches of rainfall and you get an extra two and you expand your growing season uh, a couple days on either end. It's those small increments of, of, uh, of soil quality that make that difference. I think that's it. Is there any questions? The aha moment. <laughs> this is the aha moment that, that I see so much and it, it's the favorite part of being a farm boy working for NRCS and running around the country and playing in the mud and showing the guys that without the good soil biology and the residue cover, we're going backwards. I just want to thank you guys because I know this is your break, so we appreciate you coming and spending your break with us. And thank how you. much rain did you put on my face? We, uh, we put, in about five minutes, we put about an inch and a quarter on. So we're talking a 12 inch rain, but it's still the same across, it's relative across the, the model. Right. Big thing in our area is strip till. Where would strip till come into that? Well, if they strip tilled on that slope, I'd hate to see what this kind of rain did to it. Because strip you know, till is, is coming in, and that's the new. You know, strip till is getting marketed very well. Mm -hmm. And there are applications in flat soils where, where you have poor drainage. But if there's a slope to that, uh, I, I, you know, you don't need it. You don't need it. Let, let Mother Nature's soil quality get there. Let the, the aggregate stability, the uh, soil structure do, structure do the job for you. Yeah, we're, we're calling this tilled CRP because there's no residue on it. Right? I think so, it was actually, it, it was the range ground that we got that out of. We put a lot of diversity in the rangeland and we planted CRP and put one grass or a grown and a wheat grass together so you're not going to get the, the uh, aggregation because you don't have the biological life in them that you need. And here it is in your soil structure, in your field, or in the gulf. Or on somebody else's farm who didn't ask for it, didn't need it, doesn't do them any good. Thanks guys and girls. You're welcome to spend the rest